Venom and Spider-Man need to be in the same movie together. They're just too great of frenemies to keep separate. And sure, one exists in the Sony-verse while the other exists in the MCU, but the lines between those two are becoming blurred, especially since the new Venom trailer practically shoves Spider-Man down our throats. And with Carnage being an almost unstoppable force of nature in the upcoming sequel, I think it's time for Venom and Spider-Man to team up to take Cletus Cassidy down. But how would that work? Let's get into it right now. Let there be carnage. Okay, the more I think of that title, the more I dig it. But all I'm saying is it's promising a lot of carnage, so it better deliver. But that shouldn't be a problem. Cletus Cassidy is one of the scariest individuals in Marvel Comics, even before he bonds with a piece of the symbiote. He's a psychopathic serial killer who enjoys inflicting pain on people in gruesome ways. Like as a young boy, he killed his grandma by pushing her down the stairs, and he killed his family's dog with a drill. Yeah, he isn't one of those slightly sympathetic villains. He's a true monster, and he deserved to be locked away forever. But of course, in the comics, he ended up sharing a cell with Eddie Brock, so his incarceration wouldn't last too long. As the story in the comics go, the Venom symbiote went to bust Eddie out of prison, but after they were reunited and escaped, a piece of the symbiote was left behind and merged with Cassidy. It was revealed later that this piece was actually Venom's offspring, so Carnage is technically his kid. But let's not get into that right now, there's enough family drama happening. So Cassidy became Carnage, and he's now one of the deadliest threats in Marvel Comics. Whenever he breaks out of containment, it's a big deal. He's usually portrayed as stronger than Venom, which is due in part to the fact that the Carnage symbiote isn't just merged with Cassidy's body, it's infused in his bloodstream, enhancing his powers and making him close to unstoppable. The Venom 2 trailer hints at this type of origin story. With the Carnage symbiote seemingly infusing with Woody Harrelson's Cassidy's bloodstream while he's being executed. This is going to present a serious problem for Eddie Brock. He's going up against the strongest enemy he's ever faced. So what's he going to do? Well, maybe get some help from a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. The Spider-Man character is in such a unique position right now. We know Sony and Marvel have an uneasy relationship when it comes to using the webhead. We all remember the heartbreak a few years ago when, without warning, it was announced that Spidey was leaving the MCU forever, and presumably joining the Sonyverse because the two mega companies couldn't agree on terms. But all that seems to have changed. Because the MCU is exploring the multiverse now, it means that both the MCU and the Sonyverse could feasibly use Spider-Man without confusing general audiences. So, Spider-Man could show up in Venom 2, but what version of Spider-Man? Is it the Tom Holland version from the MCU that's going through a small jaunt through the multiverse? Or is it something else? I think what would actually be better is if we see this universe's version of Spider-Man, also played by Tom Holland. It allows Holland to stay in the role, but also portray a slightly different version of Peter Parker, which would be interesting. I mean, Spidey's gotta make an appearance, right? There's literally a scene in the trailer where Cletus crushes a spider that's walking by. Is the movie just being cheeky? That would be a little cruel. There's also the big shot of the detective reading a Daily Bugle newspaper that's highlighting Cassidy on their front page. Here's how I see it all playing out. Obviously, the Bugle is interested in Cassidy, so for his execution, they send a reporter and a photographer from New York to cover it. Of course, the photographer will be Peter Parker, and when Cassidy breaks out, it means Spidey is in close proximity and will team up with Venom to take him down. So how will the two work together to take down Carnage? Well, it comes down to the unknown. What I mean by that is, if Venom 2 takes inspiration from the comics, the version of the symbiote Cassidy will be infused with is part of the Venom symbiote, which means Carnage will know every move that Venom will make. Every ability or power Venom has, Carnage can do the same thing, but better. And it's the same for the human side of things, too. Cassidy seems to be obsessed with Eddie Brock and probably knows everything about him, which means anything Eddie can do or try would be something Cassidy can predict, which means Eddie and Venom have to take the big step and rely on someone else for help. I think that would be a good message for the second Venom overall. The first movie established that the two could work together, and the sequel could push the narrative even more and suggest that Eddie and Venom's relationship is a little dangerous because they only work with one another and don't let anyone else help. Having Eddie and Venom realize that they can't beat Carnage on their own and humbly ask for assistance would go a long way in solidifying Venom as a true team player, which is probably important for Sony since they'll want Venom on a darker team-up movie sooner rather than later, don't you think? Now, with Spidey in the mix, Venom and the Webhead will have the upper hand. 
they can tag team Carnage and keep him off balance and successfully end his reign of terror. After he's defeated for good, I think both Venom and Spider-Man will have learned something from each other. I think Venom will have learned a little more about being a genuine hero, while Spider-Man will have learned that sometimes the situation calls for an anti-hero like Venom around to save the day. The two won't necessarily part as good friends, but rather mutually respected allies. I think that'd be pretty nice, don't you think? All the talks about how Spider-Man will join the Sonyverse, but what if Venom joined the MCU? Can you imagine the dark and moody Eddie Brock interacting with someone like Ant-Man? Both are in San Francisco after all. Now that's a spinoff I want to see.